Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Well, somebody made it from light back to darkness. Naomi from Islam to Christ. Naomi left Islam for Jesus. So the whole phrasing is of course so stupid because if you're leaving Islam for Jesus, you never have been a Muslim in the first place because guess what? In Islam, we do believe in Jesus. But be that as it may, water under the bridge. Let's check out this video. Before we do so, guys, as always, if you enjoy my content, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box to further support my work. Thank you so much for that. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. I am an ex-Muslim who has become Christian. So, of course, that when I chose to become a Christian, my choice was perceived as she is mentally insane, she is becoming sick, she's mentally ill. When I'm actually actually having all of my head i'm mentally sane and i knew what choice i was making okay yeah so first impression is of course way too much makeup i don't understand why women do that to themselves and moreover it's always a red flag when an ex-muslim says i'm an ex-muslim of course that my family decided to block me in all the platforms possible because they do not want me to reach out to them nor do they want to speak to me because they consider that i have betrayed them destroyed the family due to my choice I shared my testimony in French and a lot of ex-Muslim who has become Christian has left the Islam because of the Quran. Born in a predominant family okay. which is fully Muslim. I was uh, Okay, so I hear a lot of yapping yet again. So a lot of ex-Muslims left Islam because of the Quran. So why exactly? Is it because of so-called violent passages? Because if you simply go by comparison, you will find that there are much more violent passages in the Bible, of course. Total atrocities are being reported in the Bible, where God commands, for example, the destruction of Amalek, and hence the destruction of animals and even babies. So what exactly was the issue in the Quran? I'm sure we're going to find out. I expected to remain Muslim for the rest of my life and just follow without asking any questions. But the truth is I have in my genetics on my father's side, biologically, um, a family which is Christian. So <laughs> at the end of the day, the choice is personal and the choice is yours. If that is the peace that you find and okay. you have a connection with God, it is the most important. Yeah. Okay, so wait, there is a part of her father's family that is Christian and therefore <laughs> therefore therefore she has genetically some Christian in her and therefore she can make the choice to become Christian. So what are you claiming here that religion somehow is found in your DNA and as long as somebody in your family was a specific faith, therefore you can too? It's absolutely ridiculous. So we all have pagan dna then i am an ex-muslim who has become christian oh. of course that i was told that allah chose to bring me out of the religion because my heart what? was not open to genuinely meet him and that because of that i will never have the right comprehension of the quran and that i will never even have an understanding of those same verses that led me to leave because it wasn't only one part of the Quran. It was so many different parts uh. of the Quran that led me to leave. My choice has been based off things that I have been going through over the last couple years that I've witnessed yep, it, yep, my yep, own yep, eyes. Yep, quick, quick. Okay, so ah, uh, this is really painful to watch, man. But ultimately, if I understood her correctly, she basically claims that somehow somebody told her that Allah made her to leave his religion. Which is, of course, absolutely nonsensical. Why would anybody say that? If anything, you were deceived to leave the religion. And now, once you turn your back on God, of course, you enter deception and you might as well stay there. But, of course, God wants us to believe in him and him alone. This is the ideal state. This would be your fitra. But you deviated, you got deceived, and now you are in deception. But, of course, it is not God that wants you to leave his religion. To leave. My choice has been based off things that I have been going through over the last couple years that I've witnessed from my own eyes. And the fact is, I went to Imam, yeah, I'm sure you can uh, which are trust like, it's, your own eyes. priest for the Christians. And basically, these same Imams would tell me, 
if your heart is not right, like it's not in the right posture for God, then don't lay on your like mat to pray and everything. Or um, if you're not sure about Allah, then you have to not pray. You can't do this. It's being hypocrite. And that's really how I felt. I felt like I was genuinely being hypocrite. And some of these imams... What? Okay, so first and foremost, nobody ever told you not to pray. This is absolutely ridiculous. No imam ever told you not to pray. It is mandatory for us Muslims. And therefore, there is no imam in this world, I hope, I assume, that would tell you, hey, just don't pray, right? But that being said, what the imam there supposedly said is that you have to be in the right mindset. And before every prayer, we, of course, set the intention, right? Now we're going to pray. So this is a state that you have to get into. But surely you shouldn't stop praying. Which I brought up some of my questions to then I have no okay. response for me because we're not allowed to critically think in Islam. You are not allowed to question God's words because otherwise you are being led astray and you're becoming automatically an ignorant when in Christianity, God allows you to ask him questions. You got the right to ask him about your purpose. You got the right to ask him. Is he oh my God. So it's blatantly obvious that this woman definitely hasn't read her Bible yet. She's still in for a big surprise, I would say. But she's talking about a blind faith, ultimately, about not being able to question. However, within the Bible, we find 2 Corinthians 5, 7, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Or in Proverbs 3, 5 to 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart, and learn not on your own understanding, in all your ways submit to him, and he will make your path straight. So here clearly those passages are about you not asking questions, not pondering, but putting your faith in God, trusting him, i.e. blind faith. However, if you look into the Quran, if you really would have looked into the Quran, for example, in Surah al anbiya we have certainly sent down to you a book in which is your mention. Then will you not reason? Or Surah Sa'd, this is a blessed book which we have revealed to you, O Muhammad, that they might reflect upon it, its verses, and those of understanding would be reminded. So yet again, what are you talking about, woman? The Quran is asking us over and over again to ponder, to reflect, to question. This is how you saw the golden age of Islam, the expansion in sciences, mathematics, astronomy, medicine, chemistry, geography, and what not. All of this came from the Muslim world, motivated by the Quran. What do you need to do for him throughout the whole path he is with you? But in Islam, you are not allowed one second to even question anything, not even ask any questions. And most of the okay. time, you didn't read the Quran. Have the response for you. I am an ex-Muslim who has become Christian. So of course that I was told, we will never curse you, but you will repay everything that you are doing to us and Allah is watching everything that you are doing to us. You will not prosper in the things that you think you're going to do because I yeah. have done something that is so big and huge that I am ashamed in the family and I should not be considering myself a part of the family. Also, I never okay. recognized Islam as my faith for me, but for my family. So I was a Muslim out of respect for them and for the rules that was established. Yeah, At the end of the day, an African household, if you choose to make decisions that are different than what your parents want, then it means that you think you're too grown or now you are going against what they want for you and what they have established and you will never get their blessings, meaning they are cursing you for the rest of your life. Life. So I didn't want to get cursed or anything of the sort. I did what I thought was the best and good, which is why I kept being in Islam despite feeling what I felt, which was being hypocritical and feeling like I was not in the truth the whole entire time. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of unfortunate, kind of not whatever. She grew up in that family and she simply never understood Islam. And this is why I say, I know people will disagree, but I say just because you've been born into a Muslim family, 
are you truly a Muslim? No, this has been ordained upon you. But if you don't truly understand the value of Tawheed, for example, which she clearly does not, how can you then say that you were a Muslim ever? She is not an ex-Muslim. She's somebody that was born in a Muslim family. It never resonated with her. She did it because of her parents, but she did not understand the religion. And this is why she left. I am an ex-Muslim who has well, stop saying that, please. So of course I'm cringing. That I was told that I am choosing the easiest route. For sure. 100%. I am an ex-Muslim who has become Christian. So of course that I was told that I made a choice because of love when I had my own encounter with God, which I will never be able to forget. And it was a revelation to me. I am an ex-Muslim. Oh, what has is this? How Christian. old are you? So 10? of course that I was told that I am denying my ethnicity and my origins when there is a minority that is Senegalese Christian. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, so my wife is from Senegal as well, and she is Christian. She is from the minority Christians. So therefore, yet again, it has nothing to do with DNA, as she claimed. It has nothing to do with origin. And this just more so shows that you have absolutely no idea about Islam. Because Islam has nothing to do with ethnicity. Islam came for the world. So therefore, you can be a German, you can be a blonde Swedish guy, and you can still become a Muslim except Islam. Because this religion, as I said, came for everybody. It does not matter that you have some Christians in Senegal, and it does not matter that the majority of Senegalese now are Muslim. This is not what it is about. In my country, for example, 30% are Muslim, and the majority is Christian. It doesn't matter. Islam is about conviction. Islam is about you submitting your will to God, accepting his revelation, and, of course, abstaining from any type of idolatry. You didn't understand any of that, and this is why you are a Christian now. Moreover, your parents are absolutely correct here. You went for the easy path, because in Christianity, you do not have to do anything truly. Nothing is obligatory. Jesus allegedly died for your sins, even though he didn't die. He rose again. And now you're here. You can do whatever you like. You don't need to pray. You don't necessarily need to fast. There's nothing that you have to do in your daily life that defines you now being a Christian. And therefore, you simply followed your desires. All right. So this is it for today's video. I'm going to cut it off here because it's pretty petty at this stage. There is no argument whatsoever. Ultimately, what can we conclude here? She got misguided. Is it truly a loss for Islam? I would argue not really, so therefore I wish you well, but it certainly is your loss. All right, guys, and this is it. If you liked the video, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out the links in the description box below to further support my work. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace. <laughs>